a lot of money. More than $7 billion this quarter on capital expenditures. It's investing in technology, building out its data centers, and it also just bought a building in New York where it has some office space. Mariel, thank you. Now, you know that Facebook flags or blocks some posts it deems in violation of its standards. Now, internally, human reviewers and Facebook robots have these standards, but today, Facebook is set to make its guidelines clear for outsiders, the public. It's a detailed 27-page document that's on the way. What is harassment? What's a threat? What is too explicit? Photos of bare female chests will get blocked, but apparently breastfeeding and artistic depictions have been okay. What gets banned and why on Facebook later today? This is the Marketplace Morning Report from APM, American Public Media. Penn Medicine supports WHYY. Some of us live for the future, but what if tomorrow is too late? That's why today at Penn Medicine, their breakthroughs are helping to change lives. Healthy cells can now find and eliminate cancer cells. Focused ultrasound is taking the place of brain surgery to correct essential tremor. And vision is being restored using a genetic treatment. That's why your life is worth Penn Medicine. Learn more at PennMedicine.org. WHYY monitors traffic and transit for major delays. Supported by Wawa. This is WHYY FM Philadelphia. WNJN FM 89.7 Atlantic City. WNJC 90.3 Cape May Courthouse. WNJB FM 89.3 Bridgeton. WNJM 89.9 Manahawkin. And W. NJS FM 88.1 Berlin. Good morning, I'm Jennifer Lynn. It's morning edition on WHYY. Some sun in Philadelphia, 48 degrees. It's 8 o'clock. Good morning. Good morning. With President Trump facing a deadline to decide whether the United States stays in the Iran nuclear deal, we sit down with Iran's foreign minister, who's been in the U.S. pushing to keep it. On morning edition from NPR News. New Jersey's U.S. senators are introducing a bill they say will aid in the national fight against the opioid crisis. Jennifer Lynn will have some details coming up on Morning Edition. Mohammad Javad Zarif insists that Iran will renegotiate nothing. I'm Steve Inskeep in New York. And I'm David Green in Culver City, California. After two horrific acts of violence the past few days, suspects are in custody. What we know about the man accused of mowing down pedestrians in Toronto yesterday. And in Nashville, it appears the shooter at a Waffle House once had his gun license revoked. Is that a red flag for what was missed? Also, is the United States ready for a possible cyber war with Russia? It's Tuesday, April 24th. Musician Kelly Clarkson turns 36 years old today. The news is next. Live from NPR News in Washington, I'm Corva Coleman. President Trump's nominee to run the Department of Veterans Affairs is supposed to have a confirmation hearing tomorrow, but the hearing for Admiral Ronnie Jackson may be delayed. South Dakota Republican Senator Mike Rounds told NPR's Morning Edition there have been unsubstantiated allegations made against Jackson. He says Veterans Affairs Committee Chairman Johnny Isaacson is aware of them. We have been given a brief uh, sketch of what they are, but I prefer not to discuss them at this time, as I say. They, they are unsubstantiated. Uh, the chairman is aware of them. He's uh, discussed them with the White House. And look, he's he, he's one of these kind of kind of chairman that really does try to give as much information as possible to the rest of the members. But it's really up to the chairman as to what the next step will be, whether we continue on with the uh, nominations process or if we hold up long enough to uh, allow this to be vetted more fully. There have been concerns about Jackson's limited management experience as well. President Trump and French President Macron will hold high-level talks in Washington today. It's the second day of Macron's U.S. visit. NPR's Aisha Roscoe says several topics are on their agenda. Trump and Macron are expected to meet at the White House where they're going to talk about some issues where France and the United States haven't uh, exactly been seeing eye to eye. One of those issues is the Iran nuclear deal, which President Trump wants to get out of, but France wants the U.S. to stay in. NPR's Aisha Roscoe. The suspect in yesterday's deadly van attack in Toronto is scheduled to appear in court later today. Molly Hayes is a reporter with the Canadian newspaper The Globe and Mail who spoke to NPR's Morning Edition. There's just still so much uncertainty at this point. So we did learn late last night that there was an arrest. So 25-year-old Alex Manassian, um, we know so little about him at this point. It seems that his social media profiles have been pulled down uh, earlier in the afternoon. He's accused of killing 10 people and injuring 15 others. The man accused of killing four people in a Tennessee Waffle House over the weekend has been caught. It's believed he worked alone, but 
Julieta Martinelli of member station WPLN reports the suspect's father in Illinois might face federal charges. The suspect's Illinois firearms license was suspended last year after he was arrested for breaching a secure area near the White House. At that time, state authorities made him give up his four weapons, including the AR-15 rifle used in the shooting over the weekend. They were handed over to his father, who promised not to give them back, but did. ATF agent Marcus Watson says that could open up the suspect's father for prosecution. It is possible if you transfer weapons knowingly to a person that is prohibited, so that could potentially be a violation of federal law. Some Tennessee lawmakers have already begun working on a new law that would tighten restrictions on loaning firearms to people. For NPR News, I'm Julieta Martinelli in Nashville. You're listening to NPR News. Support for NPR comes from Visiting Angels, professional caregivers assisting adults in bathing, dressing, meals, and lighthouse work nationwide. Visiting Angels, America's choice in senior home care. Office locations are at visitingangels.com and the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Good morning, 49 degrees in Philly. We're headed up to 63. I'm Jennifer Lynn. It's 8.04. This is WHYY's Morning Edition. <coughs> Prosecutors and defense lawyers will deliver closing remarks today in the criminal retrial of Bill Cosby in Norristown. WHYY's Bobby Allen reports the final arguments to the jury follow the testimony of more than 20 witnesses. Prosecutors are expected to tell jurors that defense attorneys have created a lot of noise around the main task to decide whether Cosby is guilty of three counts of aggravated indecent assault connected to one encounter in 2004. The incident, prosecutors will likely argue, fits a pattern of predatory behavior the entertainer has gotten away with for decades. But defense lawyers will likely tell the jury that accuser Andrea Constant's story just doesn't add up. The last question's like, was her real motivation to file a civil suit so she can get a nearly $3.4 million settlement? Why did she maintain contact with him after the alleged assault? And why did her reports to police about the episode contain inconsistencies? Sorting it all out will be up to a jury of seven men and five women from Montgomery County who have listened to lawyers question 25 witnesses. In June, jurors in his previous trial could not reach a verdict after five days of behind closed door talks. The judge then declared a mistrial. Bobby Allen, WHYY News. Former Attorney General Eric Holder questions the recent arrests of two black men in a Philadelphia Starbucks. During remarks at the National Constitution Center last evening, Holder said common sense should have been used in the situation and the manager should have thought twice about calling the police. The former Obama administration official is helping to create a training curriculum for Starbucks along with other, other civil rights experts that will address racial bias. New Jersey's U.S. Senators are introducing a bill they say will aid in the national fight against the opioid crisis. St. Joseph's Medical Center in Patterson implemented a program in 2016 that researches and uses certain pain management methods as an alternative to prescription opioids. Senator Cory Booker is calling for federal funding to create alternative pain management programs in hospital emergency departments nationwide modeled on the program at St. Joseph's. So I'm very encouraged that if we are having this crisis which we are, the one of the greatest we've seen in, in, in generations, we should be investing in what works. We, and, and by the way, it's a great use of taxpayer dollars because making those investments in things that work can drive down the costs of everything from medical care to prisons um, uh, in the future. Booker says the funding can help hospitals drastically limit the use of addictive pain medication. The Sixers. They're playing tonight. Get ready. They're hosting the Heat Game 5 of the playoff series. The Sixers lead that series three games to one, and they could close it out this evening. Philly is looking so good right now, so strong. Early in the season, they host the Diamondbacks. Vince Velasquez starts on the mound for the Phils. Your forecast, a mixture of sun and clouds in the morning, clouds in the afternoon, a slight chance of a shower, a high of 63, and it's 48. This is WHYY. This is Morning Edition from NPR News. I'm David Green in Culver City, California. And I'm Steve Inskeep in New York. Iran's foreign minister is making his case for a nuclear deal, plausibly, for the final time. Mohammad Javad Zarif is finishing a visit to the United Nations here. He arrived weeks before a deadline for President Trump to extend U.S. participation in a deal that limits Iran's nuclear program. Trump has been pressing to withdraw or renegotiate, which Zarif does not accept at all. It is a package. You cannot pick and choose between the package and say, 
I want this, that, and the other element improved. Do you mean to say that you will not negotiate any changes or additions to this agreement, no matter what the United States and Europe may suggest? Uh, I believe Europe has said that they're not prepared to renegotiate this agreement, and I think it's very prudent, because anybody who participates in the negotiation of this deal would tell you that opening this package would be tantamount to opening a Pandora's box, and we'll never be able to close it. So the answer is no, yes. you're not going to talk this over again? I think the United States doesn't want to send a message to the world that if you negotiate with the United States, the U.S. is going to come back and say, whatever I gave you, I want back. We met Zarif in Manhattan in the residence of Iran's U.N. ambassador. The foreign minister is in his late 50s. He was educated in the U.S., so he's making his case in a country he knows. He's racing from room to room, arguing to diplomats and journalists that the agreement should stay. The deal negotiated under President Obama lifts some economic sanctions on Iran and provides permanent...